Williams. Unbelievable. Check this out while bringing out to Jimmy Lennon Jr. was introducing the fighters. Tapia comes over and watch what he does to Ayala. He shoves him away and then a skirmish breaks out. This is before the bell. I can't wait now to get this thing started. Here we go. This is the real thing. I guess it's safe to say there's some bad blood here, Steve. Pretty accurate statement. Round one scheduled for 12 for the WBA Bantamweight Championship. They're both wearing black trunks. Johnny, tap your right of your screen. Pony Ayala on the left. Tapia opens it up with a left hook, but it was blocked by Ayala. Tapia, historically a fast starter, respectful of Ayala prior to the fight. He's just very confident in his ability to be better. He says Ayala's game, and he's got a good chin. Ayala admits it's the toughest fight of his life. He looks for a fast start, too, but it probably won't go the distance. I'll tell you what, too. Ayala, he said that with Ayala, he was talking about this, that, and the other thing, but... Johnny said, I don't want to knock him out. I really want to punish him. Yes, he did. He's 5-0 he's... against Southpaw's Tapia. I think his speed's going to be a big factor here. Right now, they're both unloading mercilessly big punches. There's nothing, there's nothing easy going on in this fight. There's no feeling out here. They're going right to it. Ayala said the key for him, go to the body. That's my style anyway. He says his Southpaw style will make Tapia have to change. Although Tapia said he may have to switch. Tapia knows how to fight left handers. No problem there. Either way, while the overall feeling is while Ayala's a very good fighter, aggressive, busy, throws a lot of punches, he may be a bit too slow for Tapia. And he's not a big puncher. Only 12 knockouts in his 27 wins. We'll see how it all unfolds. He's landed a couple of nice right hooks to Tapia's body, but also Tapia has thrown that right hand right down the middle and scored with it many times already. Tapia nearly slipped again on the same pad that all the other fighters have had. Why don't they put that thing back? Everybody in every fight has slipped on that pad. Tapia constant movement going to the body. Hardly ever a dull fight with this guy. So aggressive. Attacks the game with such confidence and emotion, but he's smart too. He fights under control, although it doesn't always seem that way. Well, he fights with such emotion, it looks like he's not in control, but he is. He knows what he's doing. That's how he's, he beat Danny Romero and neutralized his power. He was under control. See, he's so quick he can get in, land a shot, and step back out and make Ayala miss. He's done it five or six times already. It's going to be key to that speed, offensively and defensively. He's out thinking him and out speeding him right this round. I mean, you see those two little punches right there? Too fast, too much thought. Bing, bing. Out. It's gone. Tapia loves to brawl. Everything with him is a war. He feels more at home in the ring than he does outside the ring. Has a puncher's mentality, but does not have a big punch. Only 25 of his 46 wins by KO. Well, round one and then some over. Round two, Tapia comes rushing out to meet Ayala in the center of the ring. Tapia's got a great corner man in Freddie Roach, who was a, one of the bravest fighters I ever saw fighting as a kid, and now has turned into a great trainer and a great corner man. Roach was a savage fighter in his day. He, he looked like a little church boy, and then he got in there and fought like a savage, like Sean. I'll tell you guys right now, come here. I'm going to tell you guys right now. Well, I'll tell you what, listen. I'm not going to tolerate too much of this, you understand? Let's go. Joe Cortez really trying to take control before this thing gets too out of hand. Joe Cortez is an excellent referee. He will take charge. Uh, he's been in there with some wild ones, too. I mean, you got to start at the beginning or else, you know, it gets tough. Again, Tapia slipped on that uh, Mandalay Bay foam rubber padding. I don't think it helps if those photographers keep pushing it up. Right now, Ayala is showing some pretty good strength, moving Tapia around, forcing Johnny to move a little more maybe than he wants. And Ayala's corner said you got to slow him down. You can't let him keep moving that freely. Ayala... Pushing Tapia back and Tapia marching forward with a barrage of his own. Look at the concentration on Tapia's face. But he gets nailed with a big right hand. Ayala scoring well, but Tapia coming back. Look at that savage punch. The infighting raging on here and then the grabbing. Tapia grabbing Ayala 
into the ropes. Body shots by Ayala, and then to the head. Good sequence here for Ayala. Excellent, five or six punches. Ayala kept his word, he's gonna go to that body. Well-schooled, disciplined fighter, number two contender, Paulie oh, Ayala. Right in there with the champion. Well, neither man giving an inch. Both guys going at it as hard as they can. This is a great little fight right now. It's steaming up. Under a minute remaining in round two. Oh, digging double hand. Digging double left hooks. And instead of an under and over, he did an over and then an under. Johnny Depp. A straight left hand answer by Ayala. That sent Tapia back. There's a quick right. A beautiful jab by Ayala. And the crowd is roaring. And now Tapia with a combination to the face of Ayala. Tremendous exchanges here in round two. Ayala continues to land repeatedly with hooks, rights and lefts. But Tapia fights back. On the inside, Ayala appears to be a little stronger than Tapia. Tapia just got nailed with a left hook. Ayala getting the better of that. Ayala getting the better of that. to move on to the next level, to face on Trinidad, and then also capture another level of, uh, of respect. Oscar, we wish you luck. Thank you. September 18th. All right, back over to you, Steve. All right, uh, Jim, round three. Round two was a solid one for Paulie Ayala. Tapia has thrown a lot of punches thus far. Many of them picked off by the gloves of Paulie Ayala. Boy, that was about as good as you can see. Two even guys going at it. I mean, and neither one gave an inch. It just went at it. God, that was good. Action-packed round. Tappy resorting to boxing smart now. Walks into a nice right hook. He's getting clocked by those hooks. There's another one. Tappy comes back, but more punches being offered up by the challenger. Holy Ayala picks up where he left off. Boy, those are hard shots to the body. Tappy's getting drawn into a little bit of a slug, but this might not be to his advantage. No, he's getting hit in the head really hard. I mean, I don't know what kind of a chin can take that. Upset minded Paul. Continues to look impressive. What is impressive? His, his punches to the body are so hard. Thudding shots to the ribs by Paulie Ayala, the southpaw. Tapia oh, stumbled and almost went down. He was pulled to the ground. It was not really a knockdown or a bounce and a pull. He's only been down once in his career. His second pro fight versus a fighter named James Dean. Minute and a half remaining in round three. Let me tell you, this progresses like this. The prospects are good that he will visit the campus sometime during the evening. Because this guy's laying off another. Here's another right hook by Ayala. And those are landing effectively, repeatedly. Tapia smiles back. I think Johnny Tapia's trying to make a point. He's not doing it well by standing and slugging with Ayala. It doesn't behoove him. He's got the speed. He's got the boxing style. Move, counter punch, that's what he should be doing. Boy, Ayala knows what he's doing inside. Those inside punches to the body are so devastatingly hard. See that? See that? Boy, he goes right to the body. This guy is tough. Ayala's tough. Ayala not intimidated at all by the so-called mystique of Johnny Tapia. The fact that Tapia is undefeated. He's a three-time world champion, has the crowd behind him. But Ayala just continues to press forward. Tapia says, you didn't hurt me. He shakes it off. But you got to wonder. Let me go, please. Let me go. Let me go. Right. We talked about it a lot. Southpaw Orthodox fighter. They step on each other's feet. Tapia's been all over the front of Paul Ayala's right foot many times already in his first three rounds. Tapia also said his biggest concern was that, aside from the left hook of Ayala, the head bucks. Fighting a left hook. Those are points going in the kip for Paulie Ayala, who's had two very good rounds, blazing rounds. Now it's up to Tapia to start. Tapia usually proficient at avoiding punches, making opponents pay when they miss. 
but not here tonight. But never underestimate the heart of a champion. I think Rudy Tomjanovich uh, once said that after the Houston Rockets won the title. And Johnny Tappy has got the big heart. In that previous round, when Tappy went down, he didn't call it a knockdown because it wasn't a clean punch. The punch landed behind his head. Tappy, excuse me, Floyd Allen kind of pulled him down, and he was off balance. So it was not a clean punch, therefore not a clean knockdown. Even though his knuckles may have scraped the canvas? That's correct. Yeah, because he was off balance. It wasn't because a punch knocked him down. It was a punch, but he was pulled down, and he was off balance. That was a correct call. All right. Round four continues. About two minutes to go. Ayala refusing to be intimidated by Tapia and has scored the more effective blows thus far. Boy, Ayala is blocking that left hook to the body. Tapia's very well. Nice right hand down the middle. Well, with Tappy, as we've seen, nothing's ever easy. It's always a drama, always an adventure, but he's never lost in 48 fights. Is his number up tonight? Paulie Ayala is trying to make sure it is. Another good flurry by Ayala, midway through the fourth. Ayala cannot go backwards. If Tappy can back Ayala effectively, Ayala can't win the fight going backwards. It's not his style. Uppercuts with the left by Ayala, and those are getting through to the chin. What a terrific fight being fought thus far by the challenger, the number two contender, Paulie Ayala from Fort Worth, Texas. Tapia doing a lot better this round than he did the last two, where he took some kind of shellacking for two rounds. But he seems now to be getting his timing back yeah. to the counters. He's making Ayala miss more, blocking more, and then countering and scoring. See on the inside there, he's tight with his defense. He bangs a hook to Ayala's head. Ayala with thumping shots right on the belt, and he goes to the chin. Under 30 seconds left in round four. And Tappy's set for right now. Yes, he has switched, as he said he might. Look out, that, that, that knee goes up awfully high. Another headbutt. The heads collide, and Tappy He's scared of being cut. He's been cut so many times. He keeps worrying about that cut there. Tapia grimacing from the headbutt. Ayala comes on again. Tapia boxing beautifully with a left and a right combination. Saves the round. Tapia saves the round. Instructions from Freddie Roach. He's so good. He is so good. If you do what Freddie says, and you can't always do what he says, you got a good chance of winning. An appreciative crowd here at the Mandalay Bay Event Center in Las Vegas as we head into round five. Scheduled for a WBA Bantamweight title. And what a start for the challenger, Paulie Allen, who continues to wail away at the head and body of the champion. Freddie Rose was correct. He cannot fire and then sit there because Ayala's going to counter. He's got to get out. Yeah, Back comes Tappy, the roar of the, 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 the crowd. Religious tattoos draped all over his back. Firing that jab, but it's being picked off by Ayala. That jab again was stopped by the gloves of Tapia. So Ayala goes downstairs and upstairs with a left uppercut. Oh, oh nice the winging left hook by Johnny Tapia. It was a beautiful hook. He made a nice little feint, dipped to the side, and fired that hook right around Ayala's right hand. Tapia's fast when he wants to be. Fast. And so is Ayala, who continues to pick off many punches. He's got some kind of defense. And how about that offense? A left hook by Tapia to the face. 
He's about to give you the last showboat. He just paid for it. Oh, he did. Oh, he did. That's just what happened, Bobby. He, he was going to do a little showboat, and he got clobbered. An excruciating right hook there by Paulie Ayala. But Tapia seemed unfazed by it. Excruciating to me. And they both had their, their moments back and forth, back and forth. Nobody's clearly controlled the entire round. Paulie Ayala starting to close it a little stronger. Though. A flurry by uh, Tapia. Oh, a big straight right hand by Tapia. That sent Ayala reeling just a bit. But Tapia doesn't step back. He keeps coming in. He keeps coming in. And when he comes in, it's three, four, five shots at a time. Oh, holy oh, hell. Come on, let's go. Cut that out. Cut that out. Let's go. Both uh, guilty. What a seesaw off the round okay. that was. Wow. How do you call that round? Buddy back home, which he generally does between rounds. Likes that camera time. Well, here, on, here we go. Round number six. Ayala's first shot at the title ended in a controversial technical decision. He lost it. He's trying to make sure he leaves tonight with the title. This was going to be hard tonight. The great Emmanuel Stewart just came by and dropped a little note that said Paulie is fighting the perfect fight. Tapia needs more right hand leads. Just when he wrote that, one of the corner men said, you got you need one more, more right hand leads, Johnny. Right hand lead with a double left hook. There it is. But he, the great Emmanuel Stewart said Paulie is fighting the perfect fight tonight. Getting very calm, cool instructions from Henry Mendez. A little more of a sense of urgency over in that Roach Tapia corner. Uh oh, what up? What up? May have got thumb. Tapia may have got thumb. No, I mean, bang heads again. Yeah, he, he, he keeps worrying about where that eye is going to get cut. He's been cut before. He keeps worrying about it. So every time he gets butted, he, uh, he just reaches over there to see what happened. with body shots himself. Oh, look at these shots. Oh, it's followed by a left by Tapia. And Tapia switches southpaw again to do it. Wow, what a series of shots. And still, Paulie comes on. And still, he comes on. Tapia does it so quick and suddenly, the switching. And he landed four or five beautiful shots. Boy, that should have had some effect because they were hard. And just won't let up. Let's go, come on. Tap his southpaw again. Now he's back already. He switches so quickly. Oh, get him out of come on, get him out of there. Uh -oh. Again, uh -oh. Combination upstairs by Tappy, but blocked by Ayala. Amazing pace to this fight. Low blow there, not spotted by Tapia. Unbelievable how many punches are being thrown in this fight. Tapia Southpaw again. He just switches back and forth. That's really funny. I mean, I've, I've never seen a guy do it that fast. Ayala says he fights better against other Southpaws, so, and it doesn't seem to be bothering him. Is a barrage and the other one comes in with one and then back and forth. They're not giving up any ground, no inches, no, no advantage. Now comes Tapia's turn. Final seconds of round six. Now comes Tapia's turn. They each take turns. Overhand right by Tapia. Back comes by Allen, and he misses at the bell. And wins around this Tapia. Switch. How about uh, your scores at the half unofficial? I got a dead heat. I got three rounds to 357, 57. That's exactly what I got. 57 to 57. Man, this is a fight. This is a scorcher. Quick mention of the online scores, even as well, by the folks watching on television. We enter round seven. It's scheduled for 12 for the WBA Bantamweight Championship. Johnny Tapia versus Paulie Ayala. It has been a stirring, compelling fight. Well, Tapia used that double and triple jab from the outside. He's so much more effective. He, he, he can ward off the shots by Ayala. He counters back so much more effectively. That's where he should be, not on the inside.
in the inside, he's getting killed. He's not doing well on the inside. Out here is where he's doing all right. Southpaw again just for one jab. Trying to confuse Ayala. Ayala, wild miss there. Tapia too quick. And he loses him. Those were not heavy punches by Ayala. That was a straight left right on the nose by Ayala. Ayala coming underneath and then over. Well, he's showing everything here. What a beautiful exhibition by the challenger. Now, you know, the thing about Tapia, he, he'd be doing good from the outside. Then he gets hit, and that fighter inside of him turns him on. Johnny Tapia that just threw a fighter comes out, and then he goes dead toe to toe. That's when he gets hit. Johnny Tapia just threw a double right hand from an orthodox stance. You know how difficult that is to do?
Well, that is some in your face corner between Ropes and Tapia. Round number nine. Two expert cornermen with very good fighters to command. The pace just not slowing down a bit after eight frantic rounds. A very even, very exciting fight. Strong punches on the inside by L. I still am convinced the inside is just a little too strong for Johnny right now. He certainly throws water when he gets under there. And it's, it's 
it's a very even fight, just like uh, Bobby has. I have him ahead by one. Great left by Ayala. Check out the gash on top of Tapia's head. He's trying to forget about it. He's got more important things like Ayala in front of him. Nearly a low blow right to the hip there by Ayala. He's okay on the belt line. The crowd getting behind. Johnny Tapia starting right now to win the combinations by starting the combinations. Then when he gets countered, he counters the counter. Now, therefore winning the point, points just by a little bit. Part of the crowd chanting, Paulie, the other Johnny. You can't even tell the difference at this point. 50 seconds to go in the 10th round as this frenetic fight continues. As long as he has Poyala back it up, Poyala's having trouble. He can't win the rounds that way. And he can't win the wins. He's going to lose the fight. Amazingly, no knockdown. <laughs> Digging shots beautifully stopped by the other. He just stood there and admired it like a Mark McGuire home run. And that's what it was, a home run that didn't score. Over to Jim Gray. All right, Steve, I spoke to Dr. Flip Homansky. He says the cut is a surface scratch on the top of Johnny Tapia's head. It will not prevent him from continuing. Steve, thank you. Thank you, Jim. The last time Ayala went past the 10th round was two and a half years ago. 12 round win by decision, January 11th, 1997, on the De La Hoya Whitaker card, Shurmak Gomez. Well, we talked to him at the meetings, too, and he said this fight not only probably be the hardest of his life, but it's almost sure to go to full 12. Well, Ayala definitely needs these two rounds, and Tapia needs one of the two. Needs him. These are I have Tapia pulling away right now, gaining the points he needs. These are truly championship rounds. It just looks like Paulie has finally started to run out of gas in the last two rounds. Did Tapia just switch again to Southpaw just for a brief second? He does it so quick so well, but I'm not always picking it up. He's back to conventional. Going the jab, following with the right. Some of those got through, some of them were blocked. Elbows and gloves blocking it by Ayala. Beautiful defense by Tappy right there. Made him miss a whole lot of punches. Paulie looking a little bit exhausted. I mean, who would? Not only has he made a major effort, but he's been clocked every one of these. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What a fight he's put up. Conditioning, huge factor here down the stretch. We talked at the top of the show. Is a fight like this necessary to be a superstar? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And both fighters fighting like superstars. Yeah, offer this fight. It'd be hard oh, to, to pick go. against that guy. boy. He's got guts. He keeps going. As does Ayala. With a right hook by Ayala. That connected, but back comes a flurry by Tapia. He's so quick, Steve. It's hard to get out of the way of his punches. And when you put your hands up to block, there's just another set of five or six on the way. Well, this is a fan's fight. Break, break out, break out, clean, break out, clean. Non-stop activity from the opening bell, and that is not an exaggeration. It's so hard to hit, he really is. Vinny misses by Ayala. It looked good, but nothing connected. That was vintage. Vintage Johnny Tapia. Now, now he's playing a little bit. Outstanding defense by Tapia. He has not been playing, but he has started to play a little bit. Tapia nearly walked into a straight right hand. And Ayala finishes with a left. Neither fighter a knockout specialist as they touch gloves. So this final round will be critical. Crucial, perhaps to determine the outcome. I have Tappy up by a couple of points right now, so he can't lose on my scorecard without some serious knockdowns. Wouldn't be surprised 
And some folks have Ayala ahead. Well, I have him. I, I have the top of your head 106, 103, three punches. So even a, a knockdown wouldn't help him that much, unless it's a 10 7. We approach the final two minutes of a dramatic slugfest here in Las Vegas. And you're the first to call it. I agree with you. This has got to be a candidate for fight of the year. Candidate. Definitely going to be right up there. Happy again trying to get the crowd going. Folks at home, don't, don't forget, we're just, just guessing, Bobby and I. We, we don't know until you hear the judges, and we've been surprised. We approach the midway point. Ayala's having a pretty good round, actually. Tapia's backed off a little Ayala, looking like he's letting it all hang loose in a quest for that title. Well, Ayala, trying his best, obviously, has some of the steam knocked out of him at this point. score totals we've all seen a tremendous 12 rounds of action no matter who the winner is they both deserve a round of applause Polly Ayala and Johnny Tapia great fight well ladies and gentlemen after 12 rounds of boxing we do have a unanimous decision as the judges agree here are the score totals Judge at ringside, Guy Jutra scores about 115 to 114. Judges Dwayne Ford and Fernando Viso both scored about 116 to 113. All three in favor of the winner. And the new WBA Bantamweight champion of the world, Holly Ayala. Steve, Johnny Tasman of this fight, you went toe to toe. Did you expect that he would stand in there like that and fight you this way? I told you I don't care. I just wanted to fight my fight. But that's why I don't believe the critics. I just go by faith, not by sight. I'm a living example. Living example. What, 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 what was your strategy? Nobody has beaten Johnny Tapia in 46 fights. You obviously have something no one you, else has. I told you I never fought him. I, you can't see the tapes and go by the tapes and predict he's going to fight like that. 
But see, he, he found me catching him. He gets emotional, so he wanted to get back in the game and fight my fight. Did he, try to, did he try to intimidate you right there at the beginning of the fight when it seemed right after the introductions that he pushed you and punched you? Yeah, you know, hey, I told him, I said, I, don't, I mean, I told everyone, I don't fight until the bell rings. Outside of the fight, outside the fight, we're friends. We're brothers in the Lord. Polly, here it is right here, Polly. Tell us what was going through your mind right there. I thought he was just going to come up there and tag. I said, hey, he wants to fight right now. I said, hey, we can fight before the bell. But what? no, you know what? I love Johnny. Great fighter, great champion. Like I said, he was the best junior bantamweight in the world, possibly legendary, but I'm the best bantamweight in the world. And he had never faced an opponent like me, never. You, were had, some, name. you had some awful good in fighting, and it seemed as though you never had to take a step back as we look at the monitor. Tell us about it. Well, you know, uh, I was fighting my fight. I was ready for him to either. I did a little boxing. I did a little slugging, more slugging than boxing, but I told you I'm an aggressive boxer. I can counter. Uh, they underestimate me. My punching power keeps them, keeps them humble, and it keeps them at bay. Do you think the three pounds was a big difference for you? Well, what do you think? I mean, I told you it was. I told you if I, if I made 115, I'd have to cut off my head. Hey, Fort Worth, Dallas Stars, Spurs, and Polly and you all out, baby. Hey, Polly, final question here, and we're going to bring Johnny Tappy in here. Johnny, come on in. Would you like to fight him again? Hey, if, if, if the money's right, it's about business. Hello, hey. man. Thanks for the opportunity, brother. Hey, Johnny, let me ask you here. First, let's start. Did you, why did you stand toe to toe? You had been so successful boxing, Romero, Canadu, some of the others by moving around. Why did you stand toe to toe? Oh, I just felt stronger than him. Uh, I was hurting him a lot and he kept on coming. First of all, I'd like to give a lot of thanks and praise to Jesus. Nobody got hurt and made the best man won. The best man you felt won? Yeah. You agree with the decision? The well, you know what happened. Everybody knows what happened. Uh, it was my last fight, with, so now let's move on to bigger and better things. What do you mean it was your last fight in this weight class or your last fight period? What are you, what are you saying? It was my last fight with top rank, and uh, the better man won, so now i got to go to John Pavel for bigger and better things. You're, you're, you're bringing up some suspicions. If you want to elaborate it, I'll give you the opportunity. If not, are you saying that you did not lose this fight fair and square? Everybody knows what happened. What do you think? Well, I think you lost the fight, but I'm asking you. If you thought I lost the fight, I lost the fight. I'm not a poor loser. I give all the total respect to Mr. Ayala. He was in great shape. I was in great shape, and the better man won.